Today, folks, we're going Wi-Fi. Stay tuned for more. Hello everybody, my name's Steve, I'm the British Railroader and welcome to my model railroad room. So today we're going to be looking at the Wi-Fi tracks WFD30. So this is a circuit board made by Wi-Fi tracks in Australia that you can fit to an NCE um, DCC system like a power cab like I have and it will make it Wi-Fi. So we're going to go and take a look at that in a moment but before we do I want to give a shout out to a YouTube channel. So this YouTube channel is called Gen X Diorama. I'll put a link in the description. This channel is produced and run by a guy called Sebas, who is from Holland, describes himself quite whimsically as a duchy. He's building a shelf layout, probably maybe a little bit smaller than mine. And he's kind of channeling his inner boomer, as in boomer dioramas. And also he's done some <laughs> great painting on his back scene, Bob Ross style. I would suggest going to have a look at him. He's very, very engaging, very, very funny. And, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of creating a whole story in a back scene for his layout. But anyway, I will put a link in description. So let's kind of move over to the layout and we'll have a little look at um, the Wi-Fi track system. So we're going to start with installation of the system, which is very, very simple. So here we have the Wi-Fi tracks circuit board. I've already mounted this to the outside of the layout. Now it comes with spacers so that it doesn't sit directly against the surface. That allows for heat dissipation. So basically the back of this is the heat sink. So you need to let air get to it. So very important when you mount it, use the spaces um, that are provided. Connection to your NCE system, in my case, an NCE power cap is very simple. You literally use the spare coiled lead that comes with the NCE um, pack and plug it into the spare um, bus point. Now, just a little note, as ever, I do things slightly differently. As you can see here, my um, faceplate is orientated so the light is at the top. Part of that is because to me, it makes more sense that the light's at the top, but also when I got the special NYNA faceplate made, it kind of got made upside down. Not a problem, I've just turned it round. If you're doing it as NCE says, this will be the other way around. So this coil, um, which I'll explain about in, the mo in a moment, which goes to your handset, um, should be in the left-hand socket. And any further cabs, which is obviously what the, um, what the uh, Wi-Fi tracks system is, goes in the other one. I've just got it the wrong way around. Also, just a note about the coiled wires. So as you can see, I've got two coiled wires. Now, the NCE power cab comes with a flat cable, which connects, connects the faceplate to the um, controller. That's because it's got six wires going through it, and you need that to be able to transmit the signal because your handset is your controller. The one that I'm using here is an aftermarket one that I bought from one of the um, uh, various DCC sellers. Um, I think it's a Digitrain's um, coiled cable. I could be wrong, but this has got the correct number of wires. Don't just decide to use the one that comes with the NCE power cap. It, this is specifically for adding extra cabs and only has four um, connectors in it. And this is what you need for this particular setup. And you literally, you plug it in there, plug it in there, and then I'm gonna switch it on. And as you can see, a red light comes on here. So that means that it's getting power. Red light comes on here, which means that the NCE system is on. And then you get a blue light over here, which says that this is now powered. And what this is doing is sending out a localized 
Wi-Fi signal that you can then connect to. So what I'm going to do is just show you on my phone. So here's my phone on the Wi-Fi setup screen. And what I've got here is, um, if I can focus this because I'm not particularly well focused, there we go. I'm just connected to my home Wi-Fi, but just here is one that says WFTRX WFD30. That is the Wi-Fi tracks um, Wi-Fi system. So I'm just connecting to that and see if this gets connected. There we go. So I'm connected. I don't have any actual internet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on engine driver. So there are different um, apps that you can use. The one that I use on, obviously, because I've got an Android phone, is engine driver. Um, there is a different one for um, iPhones. Um, if you go to Larry Puckett's video about this, and I will put a link in the description, he actually goes through more of the Apple side of things. So when you get onto Engine Driver, you need to connect to the Wi-Fi. And what we've got here is this server, SN3310196, which I can then click on. And it connects, even though it says it can't connect, but it's connected. So this is your main Engine Driver screen. So what you then want to do is select a loco. Now you can do this by DCC address. So I can put in the address in there, or as I've already done, and I'll show you how I did this, you can build up a roster of locos for this particular server. So I'm gonna to go to server roster, and I am going to click on New York and Atlantic number 261. And as you can see, it now comes up with all of the functions, etc. Again, you have to program this, and I will show you how to do that using my laptop in a moment. But you've got forward, reverse, you've got a slider here that is, will um, drive the loco. So you can hear there that the loco is starting up. And if you look here, every time you get a signal, the green light comes on. And that means that there is connectivity with what you're doing. And then you can just run your loco as you would. It's almost a bit like the Blue Army system, but instead of connecting to the decoder, this is connecting to the layout. So if I then click on that and press release, the loco is no longer controlled by this, and I can go back to my ordinary controller. Okay, so something else that you can do, if you press the three dots up here, there are things like points, routes, uh, very preferences, function defaults, etc. But if I go to points, I've set up all of my points on here with their addresses, and I can throw them automatically. So if I press point one, at the moment says closed, I can throw that and it throws on the layout. I believe you can also set up various routes so that if you say set route one where it throws two sets of points, it will then, you know, when you press that route, it will automatically set it for you. I haven't done any of that yet. But let's face it, you know, Brooklyn Park is quite small and it would just be throwing individual switches um, instead of several at the same time. But again, we're going to go down onto my workbench, have a little look at my computer and see what happens when you connect a laptop to the system. OK, so here we are. Um, got my laptop set up, got my Google screen. What I've done with the laptop is I've connected it to the Wi-Fi tracks Wi-Fi. And in your manual that comes with um, the Wi-Fi tracks system interface. It has in here what you do to get yourself set up on a laptop. 
and how you then access getting started. See here, we've got getting started with the Wi-Fi Tracks web throttle, how you get on. And basically, you've got a number here, which you have to type into your URL bar up here. So just there. However, I've done this already and I've got it set up so that I can just click on it and we get the Wi-Fi Tracks WFD30 web page. And here you've got settings, home net, locomotive roster, accessories, routes, NCE consists and reset. Now I've only played around with a little bit of this. But I'm just going to show you my locomotive roster. So here we have my roster of locomotives. Um, we've got my NYAR GP38-2, which is currently on the track, which we will use in a moment plus all my CSX engines, my FL9, et cetera, et cetera. This isn't all of the locos that I've got. This is just um, the ones that I use the most. Apparently, you can connect this to JMRI. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm quite happy just adding locos. And you just literally click on new loco. If I click on MYAR261, you've got here the name so you can edit the name call it whatever you want you've got the dcc address but you've also got the functions now the functions when you first set this up are just labeled 1 to 28 and what you can then do is you can individually set them up so that you've got the name that you want next to them which is really handy especially if you're not necessarily using the de factory defaults like i do um, so, for example, here, F5, I've got the ditch lights, um, which is something that is quite important to me for my loco. Anyway, let's go back. So what we're going to do is we're going to click drive. So we now have control of 261. So I'm going to start her up. And as you can see, that was just going to speed step one and then coming back out again. There are other ways of doing it, but that's just how I'm happening to do it on this one. We can then go down to here so that all of our functions are down here. So we can put our lights on and we'll put her ditch lights on. I can also do a class lights if I wanted to. We can ring the bell. we can blow the horn and then you've got two choices here you've got um, these buttons here and here so that's not forward and reverse that's go faster go slower and you can do it in one speed step or ten speed steps just like an NCE power cap and you've got the slider here as a throttle so it's entirely up to you how you do this but if I click on this one and we can get it to move off and she goes to speed step 10. And there she goes. And then slow her down again. And I can change by clicking this one to reverse. And then increase the speed. The temptation is to press this one to increase the speed in reverse, but it doesn't work that way. I always have to remember that. And there we go. So the loco, let's put the class lights on, I like the class lights. And we just slow them down. And I believe we've just gotten coupled up to a train, so what the hell. Let's let her take this train out. A load of gondolas. One thing I do suggest is, first off, read this manual that comes with it, okay? Always read the manual. The good thing is this is literally plug and play. So unless you've got a really complicated system, if like me, you're just running one cab, which is obviously the main handheld one, you don't have to adjust anything on this circuit board. You literally just plug it in. 
but you can do things where you can have multiple cabs and things like that. So download this. This is the full operating manual from Wi-Fi Tracks. There are, I don't know how many pages. Um, let me have a little look. There's, ooh, there's about 90 pages worth of information here. And it will take you through everything, um, including the JMRI bit, which, as I said, I'm not using. Just it, it, something that I, I say to everybody is that you can never go wrong by having the operating manual. Download it, read it. If you really want to print it up, I've got some that I've printed up um, from soundtracks. If I just show you, look, my files here my DCC, I've got folders for Hornby, NCE, Soundtracks, and Wi-Fi Tracks. And if you look at the Soundtracks one, I've got Tsunami 1, Tsunami 2. Make sure that you've got the resources that you need. This is a very, very simple system. I cannot really I emphasize how easy this has been to use and set up. But it wouldn't have been as easy without having access to certainly the getting started guide and having the manual as a backup just in case I needed it. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. And I would really, you know, if you've got an NCE system and you want to go Wi-Fi, you could do a lot worse than this. It's, I mean, you know, it cost about 70 quid. Um, I got mine from uh, Coastal DCC up in Ipswich. I will put a link to their website in the description. But anyway, as I said, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And when you do and the bell comes up, press it and click all, and you will be notified of all of my videos as they are released. But that's it. My name's Steve. I'm the British Railroader, and I'm saying goodbye from my model railroad room. Bye-bye.